Match number two of the night will have Graceland's men taking on Mid-America Nazarene. And the Yellow Jacket men, like the women at this time, are, are within playoff position at this moment in the heart of America Conference. Yellow Jacket men occupy the number eight spot. Their record is a three and four on the year. They're seven, four, and one overall this year, but three and four in the heart of America Conference. That's a half game behind Mount Mercy, who's still on the schedule at Cedar Rapids late in the year for the Yellow Jackets. And then it's ahead of Clark, but Clark has the tie break over the Yellow Jackets. Benedictine's behind them at 2 forward one but on the Yellow Jackets' future schedule, they have a win against William Penn, they have a win against Culver Stockton, they have a win against Evangel, who's behind them. So it's a little bit different. It's, it's similar but different for Graceland in their positioning in relation to the women. The women have some teams that were behind them and chasing that had a tie break, one of those being William Penn, and now Mid-American Nazarene, although I guess Mid-American Nazarene jumped them with the victory earlier tonight. But the Yellow Jacket men do not have a tie break on Clark, who got a win here early. But the Yellow Jackets over the last three matches, since that loss against Park, went to William Penn and got a win. They followed that up with a 3 to loss at the hands of Missouri Valley, and then in their most recent match, got an overtime victory against uh, Culver Stockton with a Jack leaving goal. The Yellow Jackets will have... Looks like Daniel Orozco is going to be in goal. The Yellow Jackets will also have a lineup that will include Jack Leeming, Victor DeRocha, Sean Pong's going to be in for the Yellow Jackets. And the Yellow Jackets will also have Juan Pablo Garcia, who will get a start. Alonzo Campos and Nicolo Monticelli will be starting for the Yellow Jackets. Stein Gramberg is going to be on the back line. The Yellow Jackets will be defending, it looks like, the North goal. They're going to be in their white jerseys with the blue numbers. And well, I, like I said, they were going to be defending the North goal. They're going to be defending the South goal and going from right to left or from south to north with a slight breeze that probably shouldn't be bothering things much for either team. Here's the starting lineup for Mid-America Nazarene. They're going to be starting Nicholas Redman, Fernando Churin, Vitas Boito, Rick Hovinga, Diego Zapata. All right, take it back. It's uh, Luis Martinez who'll get a start. Nicholas DeBerg, uh Jose Munoz gets a start. Pond starts. Marco Isarita, Dennis Palacios, and Enzo Carvalho. Yellow Jackets will be starting. They're going to be going right to left, and we are underway. The Yellow Jackets also have Diego Gordillo, who will be starting. In addition to Monticelli and Campos, Pung's going to be in the middle for the Yellow Jackets with uh, Tyler Daly. And then the back line, we gave you Juan Pablo Garcia gets a start. Hugo Pons will start along with Sean Pung. And then Victor DeRocha. Jackets get an early chance at a free kick here. This will be Campos that sends it to the far side. Yellow Jackets try to get Ramberg on the header. Can't do it. Cleared out by Mid-American Nazarene. Jackets will pull it down with... Victor DeRocha leaves it to Campos. Campos threads that one through Gordillo. Heel kick no back to DeRocha. DeRocha trying to get around to the right foot. Then in a scrum, this is Poles that will try for Gordillo. Knocked to the turf, as is Gordillo. It still can't get cleared. Eventually, the Yellow Jackets will 
get two to the corner. And Mid-American Nazarene will eventually... Seventh rated Central Methodist, there are, I should say, Central Methodist, the undefeated. Well, it's a, there's a good throw that gets headed by the Yellow Jackets. This is Poles keeps it in play in the box area. That ball gets tipped into the air. I think that was Churin that got to it. And the Yellow Jackets will give it up with a free kick off a of foul. Four, two minutes into the match. And Mid American Nazarene. We'll leave it in for Fernando Churin. Voita on the far side once again to Churin. Churin has his Reto on the near side. Cranberg will get to this, heads it back, off a of bounce. Compost will try to settle it. And Ty Daly, since it's for Gordillo, he's going to make a sprint for the ball with Churin. It gets directed back into the box area. Carvalho, Carvalho will send it toward the midline, and Pung gets fouled, looks at the official who concurs, and the Jackets get another free kick. Uh, two and a half into the match, Poles Hugo Chagas, or Hugo Poles sends it to the near side. Juan Pablo Garcia, left foots it. That one got blocked. Blocked from the Beers. Of Mid-American Nazarene. The Burge blocks the Yellow Jackets throw, comes toward Gordillo, back to his defender, trying to get to the pie line, did get the cross, but that one gets knocked out of the air. Granberg will try to keep it alive and does get down to the pie line. Got that one slid toward Lemming, but cleared out by the Pioneers, and a header toward the center will be collected first by Campos, or at least kept alive, but now... Mid-American Nazarene puts it back into the Yellow Jacket end. Pung will cover this thing, and he will direct it back into the goal area where it's kicked by Orozco to the near side. Yellow Jackets invite some pioneers coming forward, but Poles can't keep that one in, so Mid-American Nazarene will get a throw. It'll be a throw coming from their own end. Is Arietta? They'll be looking near side. Hovinga, or Hovinga has not touched it yet. He tried to do it there. He did with his backside. And now it'll be bouncing toward Dennis Palacios. Flipped from Pond to the far side. And a move forward is being made by Jose Munoz. Jackets will turn that one around. The Jackets will have to now deal with Boito, who is behind Monticelli, and the Yellow Jackets get a free kick. Four and a half done so far in the first period. Jackets trying to get by Boito on the far side with Monticelli, and the Yellow Jackets will get another throw. To Rocha, he'll throw that just outside of the attacking third. He'll get a return ball to him. Touch back to Pong. He'll get shoot one toward Gordillo, or shoot one, I guess, toward I guess that was Monticelli on the near side, so Kick coming from Mid-American Nazarene. Ball goes through. Granberg will get to that before Martinez will close. Voito keeps that one directed in. He'll get a nod coming back to him. Gets it out of the air. Taken by Ty Daly. Tyler Daly tried to go wide. That one sent back out of the Yellow Jacket in. Yellow Jacket is kind of a high line so far. Gets Mid-American Nazarene. Pioneers get it. From Hogan, Hogan go to the far side. Now they're going to get a little deeper. And the Yellow Jackets will try to cover it up. They get the cross toward Hovinga. Touched by the Yellow Jackets and Poles trying to get that one through. Voito will keep it forward. Voito comes to Dennis Palacios. Palacios for, for Fernando Churin. 
ushered back from Isrieta to Carvalho. And Isrieta has it again for the Pioneers. You know, try to dump it in for Hovinga. Hovinga um, could do a little bit with that settle, but Stein Cranberg will get to it. A head nod comes to Tyler Daly. Couldn't quite control that spray where he wanted, and the Bears got to it. Yellow Jackets turned that one around, but it looks like a foul coming against the Yellow Jackets. After Nicholas Richmond got to the ball, this will be a free kick coming for the Pioneers. The Bears will be striking it. Pioneers will have Buito, Munoz, Hovinga all on the far side. In fact, they load up that far post territory. But Roscoe will await the kick. That one is directed nicely and directed in. Boy, that was nicely done. It was Fernando Churin that's able to get the early goal. Fernando Churin releases off a tremendous ball. And 7-17 into the match. Mid-America Nazarene has the lead. Fernando Churin scores 7-17 in. And the Pioneers have taken a 1-0 lead. So the Yellow Jackets do give up an early goal to Mid-America Nazarene. As I mentioned, they were they played within 3-2, and they had a second-half lead against Central Methodist for their most recent game, and that's the only league match that they've dropped so far in the season. Sean Pong puts it toward the corner. Gordillo will not be able to get to that one. He does keep it safe, though. He couldn't quite thread it through his Rieta, and the Beers will... Not be able to clear it. Juan Pablo Garcia will get to it. The official concurs with a Graceland throw. And Tyler Daly will be putting it in play. 1-0. Pioneers have the lead off the Fernando Trent goal. And that's a decent throw. Yellow Jackets can't get to it within the box. Sean Pung Boy, good ball far side. Carvalho will be able to get there before Jack Leeming got to it. Jackets trying to keep it alive near side. Hugo Poles with a nice effort near the far touch line. He'll try to get to the corner, trying at least to get to a corner kick out of it. But Boito gets that one mildly clear. Leeming's going to have a, a chance to get to it. It gets cleared by the Pioneers and comes to Stein Granberg on the near side. Juan Pablo Garcia, he'll get challenged by the Bears to a degree as Rietta works against Nicholas Monticelli. Monticelli near touch. Comes to Juan Pablo Garcia. A little wide for Gordillo. And did he keep it alive? There's going to be a foul coming against the Yellow Jackets. Foul called on Graceland. It comes 8.50 into the match. It's 1-0. Mid-American Azarine with the lead. Enzo Caravaglio to Marco Isarieta. Leaves it over the head of Hovigan, also leaming, and Orozco will pick it up within the penalty area. And the Yellow Jackets will make a punt. Well, that's good depth on that, King. That one nodded forward. Caravaglio will have it nodded to him. He will wait for Gordillo to approach before he picks up. 35 and a half remaining in the first half. 1-0. Pioneers had the lead off a free kick. That was put in by Fernando Churin. Churin is in mid-center back area, and he is going to allow that ball to go through to Carvalho. He'll try to piece that together through the middle to Luis Martinez. He was trying to get the ball to Jose Munoz to the far side. Jackets will have a throw. The only Jackets have played quite a bit in their end. Hugo Poles still in the center of the field trying to thread that one through, I think, to Monticelli, but interrupted by Zurieta. Zurieta stride for stride with him is Tyler Daly. It comes to... Dennis Palacios got that one all the way through. This is Pond. Gets challenged by Leeming, but this will be a deep throw for Mid-American Nazarene. Just over 10 minutes gone by so far. First half 
And this one, the Pioneers of Mid-American as Marine have the lead, and the Yellow Jackets have a player down for now, and that is Hugo Poles. Graceland is 3-4 and four in the league, 7-4-1 and one overall. They have Central Methodist coming in next Saturday for their homecoming. There's a cross broken up by Sean Pung, delivered by Azurieta. That one goes over Churin, Gordillo, and Vuito nearest to the ball. Vuito got to it first. Carvalho with Santiago approaching. Threaded through. Lehman got a piece of it. Turned around, though, by Nicholas Richmond. Richmond did get it to the near side. And the Burge. The Burge, that's a good ball far post to bring a Roscoe out. But, and before Hoviga could get to it, a Roscoe was able to make the catch. Play to Tyler Daly. Daly going backwards as leaming for help, but that pass got blocked by Richmond. Now the Yellow Jackets have to win a ball or at least get a clearance out of here. Daly's going to go ahead and clear it. Was not going to be able to turn it around, but did clear it. And Midbury Cadastrine will have a fairly deep throw. Three, uh, we're 12 25 into the match, 1 0. Midbury Cadastrine. The Pioneers throw coming from Isurieta. There's a flip of the field. And a heel kick comes right in to DeRocha. On the Yellow Jackets will get a turn back. John Pong trying to negotiate some Pioneers. Hovinga couldn't get the return pass back to him, but it's still Pioneer possession. And Pond plays it over to Jose Munoz on the far side. Back for Pond. He comes to the near side. The Bears going to get the settle. Yellow Jackets have two coming up on him. Tries to get around to the left foot. That pass blocked, and he's really tugging at the jersey. <laughs> Uh, Nicola Monticelli. He's going to get the foul, and he actually would grant gladly take the foul. And Anila Jackets will get a free kick from Jack Lemming. He puts a left foot into it. And got that one directed. This is Monticelli. Gets around to the right foot. And did he get tripped? He is going to be tripped right outside of the box. Yellow Jackets get a free kick just to the left of the penalty area of the near side. Or is it? Oh, is that a? Oh, is that going to be considered a penalty kick for the Yellow Jackets? Sure will. And the Yellow Jackets get a PK opportunity that's going to be coming from Nicola Monticelli. So the Yellow Jackets... Get a chance at a tie here as Nicola Monticelli on a PK opportunity. He'll take it with 32.05 to go. So Enzo Carvalho, or I should say Enzo Carvalho, and Nicola Monticelli as the Yellow Jackets look for the equalizer on a PK. So the Yellow Jackets giving up an early goal. They have a chance to get a fairly quick response if... They can get it by Carvalho. Nicola Monticelli to take it. The Yellow Jackets had, I know they had a free kick against William Woods. I don't know if they've had another one this year. I don't think they've had one here so far in the season. Nicola Monticelli to try to get the equalizer. Stutter step, got it in. He was able to beat him and may have beat him on the stutter step. Nicola Monticelli puts it in as Monticelli is able to get a response. And is able to get that one at 12.56. So the Yellow Jackets get the equalizer. We're back to even with Graceland and Mid-American Nazarene as the Yellow Jackets take advantage of the PK. 
on a foul that was right on the fringe of the penalty area. Giving the Yellow Jackets an opportunity. Pond will get the ball directed back to him. Jackets, though, they are forcing the action. Voito sending it forward toward Richmond. And the Bears will find Hovinga. Hovinga's really not had too many touches right now. He gets the ball inside the box. The Yellow Jackets are going to be called for a foul here. Is that going to be outside or in? That is also going to be a foul called against the Yellow Jackets. That is also going to be inside the box. And now the Yellow Jackets are going to give up a penalty kick situation as well. So a raw school is going to have to try to deny Rick Hovinga. And a Rusk will try to do it at 31-33, remaining in the first period. 1-1 tie, so both teams are getting a PK opportunity, and we'll see if the Yellow Jackets can get a big save out of a Rosco. Hovinga will try to drive it, and he is also able to beat a Rosco as he beat him as a Rosco guest left, and it went to the other end. So Hovinga gets the lead back on a PK that comes at 13-28, and it's now 2-1. to one. So it's a free kick that has made all the scoring. That is, two of those have been PKs, and the other, other free kick was, an, I guess it was the free kick was an assist, but it led to a goal. Two ones are scored, 31-25 to go. Poles will send the ball toward Tyler Daly. Flick now for Monticelli. He hits the deck, and that's a play on. Luis Martinez sending it forward to Nicholas Richmond. Jackets will confer John Richmond and Juan Pablo Garcia. Going to be called for a foul. That means that the Pioneers will get a... Free kick from Marco Azurieta. Azurieta directs it back to Fernando Churin. Churin has Voito on the far side with that three-man back line. He'll get chased a little by Gordillo. Carvalho will move it forward. Can Pong win that one? They only got a piece of it. This is Hovengay. Nudges it to the Bears on the near side. The Bears will leave it to Pond. And that one ushered right to the edge of the box. They whip around, and that one just w- just went wide. Nicholas Richmond almost took that one around and was able to get a two-goal lead. And we are still not even 15 minutes into the match. Two ones are score. Jack Leeming leaves it for Monticelli, leaves it into some free space. Pond will get to it. Edge of the 18 gets it in the box, but Leeming will clear it out of there. Jackets will get Compost to the ball. And Compost will find Arocha. Leaves it forward. Gordillo's going to try to run that one down. Heads it one time. He's got a little bit of help. Nudges it to the near side and Daly. He's on side. Keeps it inside the touch. Able to leave it back or try to leave it back for Taylor. Or try to leave that back for. Monticelli tried to leave it back for Daly. This is Pond coming the other way. Yellow Jackets want a handball, and they didn't get it. Richmond to the near side comes to Hovinga. Hovinga will be putting it back for Luis Martinez. Martinez coming to the near touch line. He's got a little bit of help in the Bears. The Bears with a left foot strike. That one gets through to Richmond. He keeps it inside the box. Eventually, the Yellow Jackets clear it out with Leeming, and this will be a throw coming for Mid-American Nazarene. Pioneers leading 2-1. Pioneer women won with a goal in the second overtime to beat the Yellow Jackets 3-2 in the earlier match. They had to get an equalizer fairly late in the match as well. The Yellow Jackets had taken the lead 2-1 with a fairly late goal. Zarietta. Well, 
Leave it ahead for Palacios. Palacio takes some contact. They will give a goal kick to Graceland. But Orozco will take it. As we move toward the 17-minute mark in this one. 17 minutes in. And the kick directed back by Churin as he battled Cordillo for it. The Bears does keep it moving forward. And the Bears will find Palacios. Turn back toward Vuito, and he goes far side to Jose Munoz. Vuito to Churin, and Fernando Churin gets that one through toward Richmond. The Bears with a nice piece of work. Good skill level there to keep that one in. Pong turns this one around, trying to find Gordillo. Monticelli won't be able to run that one down. The Yellow Jackets will keep possession with a throw coming. From Juan Pablo Garcia. 27-30 remaining in the second half. Two ones are score. Juan Pablo Garcia. This one also directed out by Nicholas DeBerge. He'll fake a pass to Monticelli. Now try it again. That one got all the way through. It was nudged a little bit by Pond. Gramberg will... Get that one forward to DeRocha. Now Campos couldn't run that one down. Voito had it marked, but it's going to be possession to the Pioneers. 26-52, remaining in the first half, 2-1. Both teams with goals off a penalty kick and an early goal off a free kick assist by on a tight set piece. By Mid American Nazarene. Poles had that pass turned back in. Leeming will get it back out of the Pioneer in. Goes over the head of Poles. Hilla Jackets nodded it forward with Compost. It's Hoving that will get to it. And his pass turned aside by Sean Pung. There is Marco Azurieta. Who remains down and now with that stoppage, there will be a timeout that will be taken. And play is stopped at 26 14. Remaining in the first half. Two ones are score. And Leaming will kick that one almost into the concession stand area from the south half. Hovigo will. We'll get a second header by Steinberg, or Stein Granberg, nodded forward by Juan Pablo Garcia, nudges it out, so the Pioneers will maintain possession of the throw. But the Yellow Jackets deny that threat that comes off the corner. 25-10 remaining in the first half. And... The Yellow Jackets got a piece of that pass that was directed. Churin will take it to the near side. And Marco Azurieta. Palacio sends it into the penalty area. Rosco will get to it. Wanted to get that one, I think, to Nicholas Richmond. Jackets will elect to punt this one, see if they can win a header. And a Rosco with a spinning kick here, so... The Bears will get a header, kind of a neutral header. Voito 
won more of that than Campos did. Now it's sent to Juan Pablo Garcia. Did make a heel kick that's run down by Poles. Made kind of a heavy touch. Boito went after it. Could only clear it. Jackets get a throw. Yellow Jackets still moving forward here. 24-05 remaining in the first half. 2-1. Pioneers have the lead over the Yellow Jackets. Juan Pablo Garcia will be putting it in play. Nudged by Santiago Gordillo, but... They can't do much with that throw, and the Pioneers will get a goal kick. And so Carvalho will be making the goal kick, but just comes to Zurieta on the near side. Carvalho and Zurieta now and invites some pressure, and the Yellow Jackets oblige. Juan Pablo Garcia got the ball to Gordillo and some space. Leaves it down to Campos. Great move by Campos. Now Gordillo can't quite get around on it with a right foot. And a foul coming against Gordillo, and he didn't think so. Fernando Churin was the pioneer who was fouled. Jackets give up a foul. 23-05 remaining in the first half. 2-1, Pioneers for the lead. And the restart comes to Vitas Vuito. Granberg will get to that before Richmond. Keeps it up the near side. Poles will get to it. Now they send the ball to Monticelli near side. He has a chance if he can make a one-on-one move against Zurieta. He'll wait for some help. He crossed over the ball, tried to go to the left foot, spins around right. Now has some help. Juan Pablo Garcia is with him. Has some options in the box. Daly moves to the left foot. Can he get across? He did. The ball gets cleared out of there. Jackets put it in dangerous territory. Juan Pablo Garcia is going to let it go out. He was able to get there before Hovinga that allowed the Yellow Jackets, or that really allowed the Yellow Jackets to get the opportunity at this play in. A pawn, it's not called for a handball, but directed back out, and the Yellow Jackets get a throw. 22 05 to go with the first half. Campos, eh, didn't probably handle that the way he wanted. He did keep it inside the field of play, though, and the Yellow Jackets will keep possession of this because what Campos was able to do to keep that from going over the byline. In fact, the Illa Jackets even get a corner. That's an even better job for what Campos was able to do with that. 21-40 remaining in the first half. It's 2-1. to one. I guess it wasn't a corner. It's just going to be a throw. It's picked out of the air by Carvalho. Or I should say Carvalho. Enzo Carvalho in goal for Mid-American Nazarene. Jose Munoz pushes it forward. Dennis Palacios drops it back to Fernando Churin, who had the first goal of the match. Churin leaves it ahead. Steinberg will set up on it. Heads it now back. Yellow Jackets to Rocha try to get to it. Yellow Jackets get a half settle by Daly. Does have some help from Garcia. And Garcia to turn it back by the Bears. Leming's got a chance to clear and does to the midline. Didn't get over Churn and kept it from getting to Gordillo. Poles tries to help out. Pond's going to have it for now. Pond directs it back to Carvalho. And he wants Richmond. Jackets get it back to the midline. Mm, bit of a miss hit by Churin. Directed to Munoz. Now Vuito to the far side. He'll come back for Pawn. And Pawn drives over the right foot. Wants the Bears to the near side. And this is Pop, Juan Pablo Garcia. First of all, trying to fight the ver- the verge, And then trying to get possession of the ball. He was able to win the fight. And the fact that he was... The only one out of the two in a position to make a play on the ball, but couldn't do anything with it to keep it in. 20 minutes remaining in the second, or in the first half, it's 2 1. Throw comes to the edge of the box. Pong got the header on it. Palacios closed, but couldn't make a play on it. Bueto misstep, but did clear the ball. Now to Munoz. Munoz gets it a little wider now to the left side. This will be a cross, and that's a pretty good one that's made, but and this is going to be the Bears. Gets a chance to make a cross himself, and that one gets directed wide. Luis Martinez had a great chance in the middle of the box. 
but he missed just wide. And American Nazarene is going to make a change. Evan Neely will be coming into the match for Vitas Voito. And 19.05 remaining in this first period. Yellow Jackets with a goal kick from Daniel Orozco. Gordillo couldn't get to it. His Rietta did. Monticelli with a nice move to keep possession. Monticelli trying to get up the near touch. And then he is going to be fouled by Isarietta. Good move. And a pretty aggressive one made by Nicola Monticelli. And the Jackets will get a kick from Campos here. And a free kick opportunity for the Illa Jackets. At 18.25, remaining in the first half, 2-1. Mid-American Nazarene with the lead. They scored off for a free kick. A little tighter than what this set piece is going to be. Fernando Churin got to it. The Yellow Jackets have, well, stacking up the far post for Campos. That's a pretty good ball near post. In fact, Carvalho had to get to the near post quickly. Otherwise, Campos would have had a goal off that free kick. That was well done. Anzo Campos, but also a good save made by Enzo Carvalho, and it's still 2-1 Pioneers. Fernando Churin, here to the air. Can Campos win that one? He did, man. He won that one as well. That was nicely done. Ty Daly, Sean Pung, a little bit of space to operate. Wants to go to Gordillo far side. Gordillo settles off his chest. He's able to keep possession. Now an offside will be whistled against Ty, uh, Hugo Poles. And he's going to plead a case with the assistant referee with 17-19 remaining in the first half. 2-1. Mid-American Nazarene is leading Graceland. Match number two of the night tonight. 3-2 win for the Pioneer women in the second overtime. Off a free kick that was able to win it. Emily Carrasco wins it for the Pioneers. Yellow Jackets were able to get goals from Sofia Lopez and Ishba Wilson. Pond with it, center of the field for the Pioneers. He has Evan Neely now with a touch and a run up the far side. Makes a cut and will slice it to Hovinga. Sean Pong will circle the ball, gets a chance to redirect it, wants Compost. Compost again somehow comes up with the ball, and he's going to get nailed by Fernando Churin. And Churin, I don't think disagree with a foul, but he felt that there was, well, he felt that this was a retaliation situation. And Yellow Jackets will get a, Kick from Jack Leeming. 15-55 remaining in the first half. Leeming hits a high spinner. Gordillo nodded it in the box. Kept alive. The Bears sends it to Nicholas Richmond. Pong moves in on him. Boy, this is really getting physical right now. Yellow Jackets. Juan Pablo Garcia got the ball to Tyler Daly. Foul in a card. Going to be coming against... Dennis Palacios. Well, you could see the physicality escalating so that we were getting to a point where the next foul was going to result in a card, and it was Mid-American Nazarene that gets called for the foul, so thus the card. Diego Zapata is going to be ready to come in. Meanwhile, Hugo Poles will make the free kick for the Yellow Jackets just in front of the midline. 15-33 to go with the first half. Low line drive kick. Oh, Granberg's on that far side. Got headed into the air. Nodded toward the near side. Juan Pablo Garcia still inside the box trying to move toward the byline. Makes the cross. Not a lot of pace on it. The spinning eye clearance kick is directed out of there by uh, Pond. 
Meanwhile, Die Daly. Good pass to Nicola Monticelli, but he wasn't able to make the cross on Azurieta, who clears it long. Pong is there. There's Poles to take it. Hugo Poles near side. Juan Pablo Garcia. He turns it still along to Monticelli. Monticelli defended by Azurieta. Now in the center of the field, Dennis Palacios. Palacios has some help by Munoz on the far side if he wants to use him. He'll nudge it along now to Munoz. Granberg's going to be checking him. It's drifted back to Evan Neely. Now Hovinga. He's able to slip around to the left foot. His defender fell at a Roscoe. Well, he couldn't get to it, but it went outside of the near post. So Hovinga is the points leader for Mid-American Nazarene, and you can see why. That was great touch. Richmond is going to be replaced by Diego Zapata in one of the forward spots with Hovinga for the for the Pioneers. 14-15 remaining in the first half. 2-1 Mid-American Nazarene with a lead over Graceland. Orozco sends it into the air. Got by Munoz. And Hugo Poles wanted Gordillo. It rolls all the way through to Carvalho. Carvalho will pick up as Gordillo approaches. 13.50 remaining in the first half. 2-1, Mid-American Nazarene and Grayson have both scored off PKs. And then Mid-American Nazarene with a goal off and assist off a free kick. Hovind can try to win the ball. Yellow Jackets played it to the midline. Pond will have it there. Wants the Bears, and he might get to that. Leaving's going to try to close, and Leaving got to it enough to clear it out of there. Meaning that the Pioneers will throw from the attacking third with 13-20 to go with a first half. 2-1 is our score. American Nazarene with the lead. The Bears to Palacios. He will chip one in for the Bears. Little left foot falls in the lap of Orozco. And Orozco waiting to get some space from Hovinga. That one got by Joel. Turing got a piece of it. Gordillo will be considered on side. That one will go across the byline, and that means a corner for the Yellow Jackets. Boy, it's a real opportunity for the Yellow Jackets here. Gordillo, because he was able to stay on side and understood the situation, the Yellow Jackets get a chance at a corner. They're going to play it short for poles, and they flip one far side. The Yellow Jackets, uh, well, Hovinga got a piece of that. Pung's going to try to keep it alive. He'll be able to run that down the corner. He's able to get the cross. Greenberg hits! That one goes just wide. Yellow Jackets trying to keep it alive. Poles. This is some space now for Monticelli who gets inside the box to the byline. He's going to try to release it back for Poles. Can't get a left footed cross. Still along the byline. Try to get a corner out of that thing. Are they going to get one? They will. Jackets get a second corner opportunity. They went short the first time, but the Yellow Jackets eventually had a good chance. They created a dangerous opportunity. 11.47 to go, first half. Jackets try to get the equalizer. Poles has Juan Pablo Garcia short in case he wants to use that. And Jack Leeming, I guess, has a little bit of blood over the eyebrow that they're going to be attending to now with time stopped at 11.42 to go. First half, 2-1, Mid-American Nazarene, and They are going to bring Jack Leeming to the sideline area for attendance there. And that means Moses and Dedabai is going to pop him off the bench. And he'll be coming into the Yellow Jackets. So Dedabai will be in as they attend with Jack Leeming. At 11.42, we're banding in the first half. 2-1's a score. Mid-American Nazarene has the lead. Poles drives one toward Indetabai. Deflected back out for Juan Pablo Garcia. Got the cross. That's headed by, I believe, Pon. And Monticelli trying to turn through a couple of defenders. That time, no call. And Martinez and Monticelli tie up. And a foul coming against Martinez. Yellow Jackets will get another free kick. Now the corner this time, but it is a free kick. Campos almost scored. It wasn't from this distance, but he almost scored off a free kick earlier from the left side. There's that kick. He tries to get a bender. Boy, that's a great ball, but it bounces right for Carvalho. 
nearest yellow jacket there was Gordillo trying to make approach on the ball. But, boy, that is a great arc that Campos uses for those free kicks. Rolls to Neely. Neely to the middle finds Palacios. Back for Pond. Pond's pass disrupted by Daly. It's Martinez fighting for it. Yellow Jackets pulls, drops it back to Juan Pablo Garcia. Wants Campos trying to turn on Pond. They call a foul on Pond. Against the Yellow Jackets, another free kick. Ten and a half remaining in the first half. Yellow Jackets getting possession. They are getting more possession or more possession time. On the Yellow Jackets. Are down 2 1. Hugo pulls, drops it to Ndedevai. Ndedevai, pass blocked by Pond into the air. Ndedevai won't be able to win that. Pond will. Pond drops it for Nicholas the Bears. The Bears had it ushered out by Nicola Monticelli. Leeming is waiting to come back in, likely for Ndedevai. He will be allowed to come in by, by the referee. And Marco Isarieta will be putting it in play for the Pioneers. 9.34 to go with the first half. Hovinga will get the throw. Hovinga couldn't get the ball directed to the side. Pong needs to do something with it on the sideline. Drops it back now for Juan Pablo Garcia, who won the ball. That was nicely done. And he'll leave it for Compost, trying to get the ball threaded through to Monticelli. Compost able to get it off the rebound. Compost has some relief. Juan Pablo Garcia is the relief. Back for Compost. Compost surveys the field with Pond on him. Directs it back to Jack Leeming. Chased down by Hovinga. Allows it to go behind him all the way to Orozco. Orozco approaches the ball with the left foot. Didn't get a lot of depth on that. The Bears couldn't get it. Pablo Garcia does. Now Poles has it, leaves it long, far side. That's onside for Ty Daly. Had to run a little laterally there, wasn't able to pick it up in full stride. Drops it back for DeRocha. Now play to Campos once again. Ty Daly far side. Tyler Daly got the ball toward Campos. No foul called there as Campos hits the deck just outside of the box. And the Pioneers coming back. They're looking at their opportunity for a counter. They leave it a little further ahead, direct it out. When it's touched away by Granberg, who got it away from Diego Zavada. 8-10 remaining in the first half. It's 2-1. Mid-America Nazarene with the lead. Pond drops it back for Churin. And it gets further ahead now to Munoz. Munoz running laterally, battling with Pong. They say play on. Pong gets the ball to Campos. Campos trying to thread that one through to Gordillo, but Churin gets in front of it. He'll use Carvalho. As relief and Carvalho punts, but turned back by Juan Pablo Garcia. Comes to Pond. Pong approaches the ball. This is Juan Pablo Garcia shielding off the Bears. We'll get the ball to Monticelli. Monticelli, a couple strides near side. Now back for Sean Pong in the middle. A little chip. Gordillo offside. Gordillo offside. Yellow Jackets turn it back with 7.20 to go. The Yellow Jackets... We'll get Bruno Lago here to the game, and Ben Becerra will be coming in. Lago and Becerra, I assume, coming in out know, of the forward spots. Campos replacing for the Yellow Jackets, and Diego Cordillo, or Santiago uh, Cordillo, is also going to be coming out. Two one, Mid American Nazarene. Under seven to go. Kicked by Carvalho. Pung is going to be called for a foul here as he goes up the back of Luis Martinez. And this will be almost dead center on frame of goal, but will also be probably 35 plus out. for Mid-American Nazarene. Pioneers will be putting the Bears on one side. He's on the near right. And he will kick. Makes that little chip that gets all the way through to Orozco. Gets it on a hop. He will 
run forward to see what's there. And now punts a high spinner at the Yellow Jackets. Will run forward with, with Ben Becerra. Becerra, well, he didn't have, didn't probably get that pass where he wanted. I think he wanted Brugo Lago. It works out. The Yellow Jackets still got to get a throw. It's going to be, well, in fact, it'll be still from right around the attacking third. Five and a half remaining in the first half. 2-1. Pioneers have the lead. Throw coming to Basiri. He's going to have to try to work out of the corner and try to do it in some traffic. But somehow he popped out of it with there. And he gets to the edge of the box. Still going forward. No handball in the corner, but lobbied for. And it's directed out by the Pioneers. Victor DeRocha will allow Tyler Daly to throw that in. Just over five to go, first half. See, Yellow Jackets load up the box area. This is going to be an attempted long throw for Granberg. Granberg does have Carvalho, or Carvalho right behind him and nudged him a little bit as the throw was coming forward. 4.50 remaining in the first half, 2-1. Pioneers of Mid-America Nazarene, a lead over the Yellow Jackets. An early goal for Mid-America Nazarene. Yellow Jackets countered with a fairly kick PK, but... That was countered again by another PK that came. No, that was within a minute of game time. Sean Pung trying to clean it up. Foul called against the Pioneers. That will be Yellow Jacket. Free kick. 420 to go first half. 2-1 Pioneers for the lead. Stein Granberg for the Yellow Jackets. Pushes to DeRocha near side. Popped up. Wants pulls. And Juan Pablo Garcia with a nice head nod against Zapata to try to get away. And the recovery by Zapata leads to a foul. The Yellow Jackets get another free kick that'll be coming. In the area for Jack Leeming, still in the Yellow Jacket end. And Leeming. Puts the foot into it and drives it where it get a neutral header by Lago. Second one right in front of the 18. This is Poles gets inside the box, still has it working, and he's got some help up from Monticelli if he can use it. Hugo Poles draws two defenders, heel kick, trying to get through to Monticelli. Monticelli is able to save that one in with a spinning kick. Tried to drive through two, couldn't get through those two, and it's cleared out of there by the Pioneers. Palacios cleared it out. The Yellow Jackets almost threaded their way to an opportunity. Juan Pablo Garcia, left foot out. Well, that's a good ball, but nobody on the other side. Carvalho will pick it up and hop under three to go into first half. 2-1. Mid-American Nazarene still leading over Graceland. The 7-4-1 Yellow Jackets, but it's the league record that counts for postseason positioning. That's a three and four, and that's at number eight right now. We have Central Methodist coming in. Oh, here's an opportunity. Zapata gets into the box. One on one on leaving. Now Hovinga on the far side goes wide, and he said that the Yellow Jackets hit that one for a corner that's going to be coming for Mid American Nazarene. 2.15 remaining in a first half. Pond will take the ball strike for the Pioneers. And the Pioneers will be putting Neely up out with a near post. And they also have Jose Munoz on the near post. That's a great ball. The Yellow Jackets need a header and got one from Granberg. It will be Israelo trying to run it down. It actually gets taken by Palacios. The Bears want it back for Palacios. Juan Pablo Garcia could not get that one cleared. Granberg will get that one turned around. They knock the ball to the midline. Taken there by uh, Luis Martinez. They still try to keep it alive. That's a long cross. Orozco is going to get a lane to the ball, so he comes up to get it. He's got a chance at a counter here. If he can get Lago to make a play on it, he gets a neutral bounce. Can he win the second ball? This is going to be Monticelli that goes around to the right side. The bender's going to be high and a little wide. He went to the far post. 
Minute five remaining in the first half. 2-1 Mid-American has a Reen with the lead over Graceland. Yellow Jackets. Are in match number 13 of the season. Yellow Jackets have won two of their last three. Their wins at home in the league over Evangel. Well, just the win at home over Evangel so far. Well, the Yellow Jackets won their first three. Here's a chip that gets made to Monticelli, who gets inside the box. It's going to be a chance. Monticelli just wide of the near post with 24 seconds to go. 2-1, Mid-American Nazarene. Pioneers will be deliberate about putting this one back into play. Carvalho with 10 seconds left. Takes a look at the clock. Puts the ball. On the line of the six, four, now three, and that will do it. 2-1, Mid-American Nazarene will go to the halftime break. With a 2-1 advantage over the Graceland Yellow Jackets, you're watching Graceland Men's Soccer and watching GUJackets.com.
Mid-American Nazarene, a 2-1 lead over the Illa Jackets as Mid-American Nazarene will have the starting possession. And they also have Nicholas Richmond, who's going to be back in. Richmond directs it into Pond, and Pond sending it long for the Bears. That'll be a little too long for the Bears, and the Illa Jackets have Victor DeRocha up front. They also have Hugo Poles. All right, take it back. That is a Mid-American Nazarene throw, so the Bears... Throw comes toward Richmond. Richmond is not going to be able to make a play on it, and the Yellow Jackets get a goal kick. Yellow Jackets have Gordillo in. Jackets also have Rafael Salas in. He's in for the first time. And then Compos is the other forward in the Yellow Jackets 3-3 alignment. And... Pond sends that one forward for Hovinga to go chase. They bring a Roscoe forward with Granberg and a shield off Hovinga. And the Yellow Jackets kick it toward Gordillo. Gordillo nudged that one toward Salas. Couldn't quite get to it before Neely got a piece of it. But the Yellow Jackets recover with combos. Behind Gordillo. Gordillo, good soft touch. Got around to the left foot. Gets inside the box. Now some contact. And I assume they're going to call a foul here on Gordillo. And Mid-American Nazarene's for Fernando Churin, who had the first goal for Mid-American Nazarene. He is the one that gets fouled. The goals for Mid-American Nazarene, Fernando Churin, and then Rick Hovinga. And for Hovinga was his eighth goal of the season. Churin's goal was his second of the year. That kick by Carvalho will get play to the midline. Eventually won by the Pioneers. Neely directs it back to Carvalho. The Yellow Jackets in a little selective with the pressure here. Churin has some space to operate. Will find Azurieta to pond to the center of the field. Near side is Jose Munoz. That ball will try to get through. Yellow Jackets. Uh, did a good job with a layup by Juan Pablo Garcia to take that one away from the Bears. Uh, header by Poles, and Gordillo hit the deck. It's going to be kept alive and then knocked by Marizzi, by uh, Azurieta out of the Yellow Jackets penalty area where Rosco will get it. But the Yellow Jackets in a 2-1 match will send a line drive kick out of the goalie towards Salas. Gordillo's got a little space now, sends it wide towards Salas, but Neely will, well, Neely was trying to provide a shield, and Salas was continuing a charge. Carvalho does go ahead and take the possession, puts it down, kicks it toward Hovinga. Leeming's going to nod that one forward and back, I guess I should say, to Orozco. And three and a half now done so far. First half, 2-1, or I should say second half, 2-1. Mid-American Nazarene with a lead over Graceland. And that kick by DeRocha will be knocked out by Jose Munoz. DeRocha throws forward, wants Gordillo. And... Campos hit Gordillo. Now Salas couldn't keep possession. But Orocha is able to save the possession. It's at least he hits this one off Munoz. Throw coming to Campos. Campos, good touch. Back now to DeRocha. And DeRocha didn't get that pass through cleanly from Munoz. Mid-American Azarine gets it back. Evan Neely with a throw headed. Back into the Pioneer in. Palacios wanted to go to Munoz. Foul as DeRocha takes a shot. Granberg will yield the free kick. It's Hugo Poles of the Yellow Jackets moving some players forward here. And Poles will take his kick 
from just inside of the midline. So a set piece from a long distance for Hugo Poles. And gets a line drive kick. Granberg can't get a piece of that. Maybe that was Gordillo. And this is going to be a chance. Orozco comes out. He's got to win that ball. He did because the Burge was on his way in a dead full sprint. But Orozco comes out to get it. So the Yellow Jackets gambled a little bit with that set piece from distance. But works out. Evan Neely's throw coming toward Hovinga. Hovinga with Granberg trying to bother from behind. Pond knocked off the ball by Granberg. Keeps it alive. And the foul coming against Pond. Yellow Jackets get another free kick. As we get inside of the 40-minute mark of the second half. 40-minute mark going down, so a little over five and a half now in. Hugo pulls for the Elite Jackets. We'll get the free kick. The Elite Jackets a little further back. Well, that's a drive with some elevation to it, but it's also an easy take for Carvalho. And Enzo Carvalho will roll it to Marco Azurieta. Back for Carvalho. The Yellow Jackets not pressuring yet. Fernando Churin sends it long. That'll get over the head of DeRocha. He tries to adjust to it. Jose Munoz will get a step on him. Yellow Jackets try to converge. Now Martinez in the center of the field. A pond. Pond's got the verge on the far side. Nicholas the verge with the left foot. Pretty good ball. Far side. They do get a nodding header and it goes in. Look at that. Man, that was quite a play made by Jose Munoz. He was able to get a header that nodded in, and it's 3-1. So Orozco a little deep, and at 38-37 to go, Jose Munoz. Able to establish the two-goal advantage. And Munoz gets his first goal of the year. And now the Yellow Jackets have some catch-up work to do. Three ones are score. The Yellow Jackets would ideally like to try to get something back with a quick answer. Mid-America Nazarene. Maybe trying for the kill. Good work made by DeRocha to turn this one around. But Pond gets it right back for Palacios. And Granberg to Sellis. Went a little wider to Rocha. Trying to keep the possession going. This is Campos. Did get the ball to Gordillo on a dead run. Churin's going to get to it first. Directs it back to Carvalho. Carvalho has it headed back by Poles. But all he could do was go toward the corner area. 37-40, remaining in the second half. 3-1, Mid-American Nazarene has the lead over Graceland. Yellow Jackets fell here. To Clark in their conference opener by a score of 3-1. Losing to Park, 2-1. They did beat Evangel here by a score of 5-0. Hovinga couldn't do much with the ball passed by him. So now Pond has it. He'll be fouled by Tyler Daly. Free kick coming for Marco Isurieta for Mid-American Nazarene. And the Pioneers are going to put some numbers forward here too. They'll have Fernando Churin play it short to Isurieta. Lost one. They go across the face of the goal, but from some distance. Juan Pablo Garcia try to get, send it up the far touch line, and that will go out as it's sliced on him. And Nicholas Thibers will have the throw for the Pioneers. 36 18 remaining in the second half. Holding a back for Nicholas the Verge. The Bears will get the ball across the face of the goal. On the back side of that is Jose Munoz. He couldn't do much with it after getting a really slick goal a moment ago. 
and creating a two-goal advantage. Stein Granberg for the Yellow Jackets. Sends it now back for Jack Leeming. That pass gets blocked. Yellow Jackets need to move it forward now. Tyler Daly couldn't get a piece of that one. Pablo Garcia did along the far touch line. Keeps it going and threaded it through. Now they've got a chance with Salas forward trying to stay on side. They are still on side until the ball gets intercepted by Marco Azurieta. I guess they're still on side, but now they're chasing. And Pond. Move it forward to Martinez, intercepted by Pung, but restolen, and Hovinga went behind the intended target in Richmond. The Yellow Jackets have one Pablo Garcia with it on the left foot, wants Gordillo. Gordillo trying to dig into Fernando Churin. Gordillo couldn't add that one along, both ball. Gordillo trying to pick it up. That ball is going to be played off of Gordillo. Marco Azurieta knocks it off of Gordillo to Give it a throw to Mid-American Nazarene. 34-57 to go. Here in the second, it's 3-1. Mid-American Nazarene with a lead. Yellow Jackets will welcome in Central Methodist. One of the two Heart of America teams that has won national titles in recent years. In fact, they beat a conference school to get there. Missouri Valley, the defending national champs. Yellow Jackets had them last Saturday. It was 3-0 Missouri Valley. Pung takes it away from Hovinga. Now it's DeRocha. Wanted to try to get to Salas, but DeRocha got a piece of that one. Keeps going. Sends it to the middle, and Hugo pulls. Pulls second, now a third touch. Wants to go to the corner, and Tyler Daly. Daly, decent settle. Gordillo lets it go by, and a drive with the left foot. Of Hugo Poles, and that one goes wide, but Yellow Jackets are going to be denied, and Carvalho will get a goal kick for Mid American Nazarene. Both teams have a penalty kick, and the Pioneers have scored off a free kick as well. And then another goal that didn't look like it was all that good of a chance. But it was a slick goal by Jose Munoz. Juan Pablo Garcia for Santiago Gordillo. Trying to circle on Turing. Got the ball to Poles. He'll try to make a long switch. Juan Pablo Garcia keeps it going forward. Sellis will try to run that one down, trying to get to the ball. Continues going forward on it. The ball gets cleared, just cleared, by Jose Munoz. Yellow Jackets will get a deep throw. Still plenty of time, but the Yellow Jackets would like to at least make a goal back here. And not have to get in maximum, get in really chase mode. And have to get ultra aggressive. This is the Bears. Boy, he can't run. You can see Juan Pablo Garcia trying to track him down. He did make up some ground. Then he made a slick tackle. They call a foul, and that'll be a card on Juan Pablo Garcia. So Juan Pablo Garcia did run him down, gets a second card of the year. And out of the yellow card, there's also going to be a free kick coming for Mid-American Nazarene. The booking made for Juan Pablo Garcia, Nicholas Theberge, who was the party fouled. He'll now get the free kick opportunity for the Pioneers at 32-30 to remaining in the second half. 3-2, Mid-American Nazarene has the lead. Again, beautiful evening, particularly for the early to mid part of October for college soccer. That cross will go across a face of goal, but Orozco comes to get it. He'll try to give Gordillo an opportunity to do something with it. Good settle. Now folding over to the right side, Campos. They find him on the right wing. Neely's going to be on him. Campos gets into the box, trying to drive right. The ball kicked wide off the relief coming from Martinez. And out of bounds. 
We're off the byline. It means that the Yellow Jackets will get another corner. This will be Hugo Poles. It will be taking that corner kick for the Yellow Jackets. It will plant Stein Granberg on the front pose. We'll have compost in the middle part of the frame area. And I guess it's going to be Juan Pablo Garcia who will take the corner for the Yellow Jackets. 31-42 remaining in the second half. 3-1. Yellow Jackets are down by a goal for now. The Yellow Jackets will run back poles, so the Yellow Jackets... Don't appear to be going short in case they were going to. Palacio was going to stay close. And Garcia will drive her to the far post. Guardia trying to set up. It's caught out of the air by Carvalho. Enzo Carvalho goes up to get the corner. Attempted by Juan Pablo Garcia. And the Pioneers will elect for a goal kick that Gets sent over Richmond, also over Hovinga, and Hovinga's going to be called for foul. So he foul Jack Leeming. Jackets will get Nicolo Monticelli. Looking like he's going to be in a position to be coming in. He's not going to be yet at the check-in area. So Yellow Jackets send it toward Gordillo. Nodded forward to Campos. Back to Vor Gordillo. Wanted Salas and a foul coming against Fernando Churin. And the Yellow Jackets get a set piece here from, no, it's going to be maybe just outside of 30. It's going to be a relatively tight set piece here. So the Jackets will get a chance, and this has been an area that Compost has been really good about fire to the net. So he and Juan Pablo Garcia will both be on the ball for now. Toward the ball will be delivered by Compost. Going for the net now on the near or far post. And Carvalho will go ahead and make the save. little contact with Leeming there. And Carvalho will blast it away. Pong. We'll head it back toward the center. Pawn and then Pung. And eventually it will be Churin that gets to it. Heel kick by Hovinga. Gets a return ball and blasts one high into the parking lot. Goal kick Yellow Jackets. Substitution. Graceland. Rafael Salas replaced by Nicola Monticelli in a lineup. Moses and Dedebay is also getting a Warm-up off. He is not going to be coming in yet, but he's going to be at the ready, and I think goes into the check-in area. 28.55 remaining in the second half. Orozco with kind of a spinner of a kick. It didn't get to the midline. Pablo Garcia will get to it. Now Leeming puts a left foot into it. High one that the Illa Jackets have to win a header for. It's Churin that gets to it. He directs it out. Juan Pablo Garcia will pick it up and get a throw. This will be Indedebay who comes in. Moses Indedebay for Juan Pablo Garcia. Hugo Poles will be coming in for the Yellow Jackets, or will be coming over for the Yellow Jackets to throw it in. And now they'll just give it to Indedebay. And Indedebay will toss to Campos. He'll kick back for Indedabai, trying to fold over. Indedabai over to the right foot. Little chip for Compost. Compost directs the ball to Poles. Does he blast? He'll give it a shot. That'll go wide of the near post. But the Yellow Jackets, because of a tip, are going to get themselves a quarter kick out of this with 27-49 remaining in a second half. So the Yellow Jackets getting some opportunities. They'll bring Poles over to take the corner. After it had been placed down by Monticelli, once again, Monticelli backs off of the corner area. Poles strikes it. That's a ball that comes, well, it's kept alive by, I think, Granberg. Dotted forward by Thabirge, and the Yellow Jackets have to be cognizant of his speed. Juan Pablo Garcia, or I should say Victor DeRocha, was able to get circled around. Now Martinez could not keep it in play as 
Munoz gave it a sh shot. 27-02 remaining in the second Gordillo as a go over him as he tries to shield off Churin. Churin kind of frustrated. Gordillo tries to shield off his defender with a lot of those. And and Churin has been frustrated because of a couple of the calls. Compost and Poles will both be nearest to the ball. And it'll be Compost. That puts the foot into it. That's a pretty good ball if the Yellow Jets can get a header, but Carvalho goes up to get it. Cordillo was going to give it a chance, but or he was going to try to get to the spot before Carvalho. But Carvalho gets to it. Evan Neely, uh, the ball rolled toward him. And Zurieta had to run that one down to keep that one out of dangerous territory. The Yellow Jackets had... Monticelli that was lurking there. Pond plays it to Palacios. He goes a little wide. Munoz won't be able to run that one down. Jackets will try to restart quickly with DeRocha to Campos. On to Campos, finds Sean Pung. Pung drives it long. Yellow Jackets are going to keep DeRocha on side. DeRocha couldn't step away from Evan Neely, though. Neely will find Martinez. Coming out of Munoz. Munoz wants Hovinga. Leeming directs that one out. 3-1 Pioneers for the lead. As we played. Now well, we're into the 20th minute second half. So the 65th minute so far for the match. Hovinga put into the air and will go over. Out of Neely and Campos giving possession to the Pioneers. Throw broken up by Pung. It was in Tidor Martinez. Leaves it to Monticelli. He was looking at Campos. This will be Munoz. They'll get to it for the Pioneers. Neely has it back. This time uses Fernando Churin. Slips inside of Monticelli with a slick move. Won't be able to get away from Poles, but he got it directed back to him. He'll use Azurieta. Now to the far side. The Verge. Boy, that's a good kick that Granberg will turn back. Campos can't get the foot settled there. Nodded along by Evan Neely. Now it's Munoz. Comes back to Hovinga. Hovinga trying to get around to the right foot. Leaves the ball now for Palacios. Palacios left foots it over. That one broke it up. Intended for Munoz. Broke it up by Victor DeRocha. 24-14 remaining in the second. And the Pioneers will get Augustin Toreo into the game. So Augustin Toreo will be out of the match and take the place of Luis Martinez. Just under 24 remaining in the second half. And Toreo is going to be in on it early on. Campos ooh, hits the deck hard when Fernando Churin gets a chance at some contact. This time, Neely sends it into the air, working around Gordillo. Oh, that one hit into the air by Pung, but that one was of neutral direction, or maybe even a little advantage, Mid-American Nazarene. Diego Zapata is coming in for Nicholas Richmond. Palacios to Munoz, back four to Palacios. Now Pung. Moves forward, negotiates poles. Hovinga puts it in open space and then tries to battle for possession. The Verge will get to it. Now it's Zapata that has it for Palacios again. A little chip couldn't get through. Stein Granberg, uh, Campos tried to touch the ball to Daly. Give it again to, Pun to Munoz. Munoz will find Diego Zapata. Zapata sends it now to... Toreo, Zapata's shot got blocked by Pung, who still ends up with the ball in front of him. He has some help from Mendetabai. He'll punch it back to 
Sean Pong. Pong sends the ball to Campos to the near side, trying to stay on side. He's going to be ruled on side. Yellow Jackets flip the field. This is Tyler Daly for Campos. This is a chance, and he will get around to the left foot. Oh, he wanted to go back for Tyler Daly. Mean maybe one move too many. Here's Munoz the other way, leaving it ahead for Hoving up. And the ball kept alive. It's going to be by the near touch. And is that going to be a goal kick? They do say it goes off of Hovinga, so the Yellow Jackets get a goal kick here. 21-48 remaining in the second half. The Yellow Jackets put together a dangerous, well, put together an opportunity anyway. Stein Kramberg comes near side. Victor DeRocha, and a heel kick by DeRocha gets away. Jose Munoz, who has the goal that is given the insurance to Mid-America Nazarene. Hugo Poles lofts that over the head of Palacios. Churin will head it back. This is Zapata that has it with the Bears on one side of him. He'll use the Bears, but goes well long, even for the speedy the Bears. 21-08 remaining in the second half. 3-1, Mid-America Nazarene has a lead. Tyler Daly to Moses and Dedebai. And Dedebay, ooh, dropped it back. Hovinga had a chance to get to that, and it will be a foul that's called against Rick Hovinga, against Jack Leeming, or against Hovinga, but he was a foul while he was in contact with Jack Leeming. Yellow Jackets will use Orozco for the free kick. 20-40 remaining in the second. The Yellow Jackets are going to either need two goals really late, they're going to have to try to get one back here. Big right foot by Evan Neely. Sends it high into the air. And Dedebay got the header on it. Still taken by Pond. Far side, the Verge. The Verge wants Hovingo. He chested it out to Palacios. Palacios wanted Hovinga again. It's taken by Zapata, though. Zapata got it to the front of the box. But Arocha directs that one away. The Bears will take it. And that one gets over the head of Pong. There's a nod by Pong. Far side, Tyler Daly deals with Hovinga on the far side. Hovinga is able to get a corner out of that. Pioneers will get a corner. Bruno Lago will be getting set to check in for the Yellow Jackets. And it would appear Batui... Isa will be in for Mid-American Nazarene. 1928 remaining in the second period. Mid-American Nazarene has a lead over Graceland. And uh, I think it's... And that kick coming near post. That one's going to be coming inside of the near post as Lago comes in. Vitoy Isa will be in for, I assume, Jose Munoz. He will be taking the far side of the field. Moses in dead of high. Drops it back now. The Yellow Jackets will try with a build up here. Bruno Log, or Bruno, or I should say Hugo Poles, wanted in dead of high. Issa trying to get in the mix. And Dedebay gets a throw, comes in for Tyler Daly. Daly trying to turn, did get the ball to Sean Pong, trying to get around to the left foot. A little more pressure by Mid-American Nazarene. Issa from that far side. Leeming's going to get to it first for the clearance. For the Pioneers, will get a deep throw at 18-20 to go with a second. 3-1, Pioneers for the lead over Graceland. And the uh, first... 14 minutes of this one. We had three of the four goals that were scored. Then we went well, seven minutes into this one. Boy, there's a needed header that was made by Hugo Poles to save a dangerous situation. He headed it in open territory for Orozco to run it down. 17.45 remaining in the second. Spitting eye kick that will be actually moved back by Pond, but he knew what he was doing apparently because Evan Neely got there and DeRocha won't be able to run that one down despite a full sprint. Diego Zapata leaves it to Nicholas Thibers who will 
be putting it in play. The Yellow Jackets look like they are getting Barrera with a chance to come in. Stein Granberg is going to be called for a foul against Rakovinga. And the Yellow Jackets are going to have to defend a pretty tight set piece. Now, it'll be coming. from a relatively sharp angle here, but there is still some options for Pond to use. I don't know if he'd be a little difficult to get that one, be a little more difficult to get a bender in, but Pond, oh, that one got netted by, or that one got headed by Hugo Pohl, so he was able to time the strike. This will be a straight corner, though, for Mid-American Nazarene. Pond will take that one as well. This will be an opportunity to Bender, although they line up. Hoving on the far post. Here's the kick. That's going to go well wide. The Bears gets the header. That one also goes beyond the byline. Barrera will be coming into the game with the Yellow Jackets. And the Yellow Jackets will get Sebastian Chiero also into the game. So Vieira and Carrera, yeah, so Chiero and Barrera both in. Yellow Jackets are down 3 one at the moment. And the Yellow Jackets whip one to Sebastian Chiero. Trying to keep the possession alive. Turned around by Pong. Hovinga, well, he hesitated, hoping that the ball would get to him, and it never did. Rocha moves forward. Lago trying to stay on side. The ball did get to him. Did they call well, they called a whistle on the foul against the Pioneers. And they stopped the quick restart by the Yellow Jackets by moving poles back a little further. At 15-15, remaining in the second half, 3-1, Mid-American Nazarene leads Graceland. First match, women's match, went overtime into the second overtime. Emily Crosco ended it with a score off a free kick. Yellow Jackets bring it back for Poles. This will be Monticelli. Takes some contact there from... Uh, takes some contact from Augustin Torreo. And the Yellow Jackets will get the call here. and They'll get another free kick at 14.40 to go. Poles to deliver it in. Poles to deliver it with a strike on the right foot. Gets that one into the air. It's a pretty good ball. That's actually knotted toward Pond. Yellow Jackets will let it go out, so they'll take the throw from just at the, eh, right about the attacking third. And it looks like Poles will try a deep throw. That one trying to get toward Pong. Headed by Neely. DeRocha trying to settle. And eventually... It has to be cleared out by DeRocha because Torreo otherwise was going to get an advantage on him on a run. 13.47 to go, second half. Mid-American Nazarene leading 3-1. to one. And Evan Neely, some distance on that throw. Chiero Touches to Monticelli. Now Sean Pung surveys, circles. Stein Granberg back through a Roscoe. Oh, he kind of miss hit the ball. He has to recover to get a line drive strike with an approaching Zapeta. And Barrera can't keep that one in. Pioneers get another chance at a possession. Marco Azurieta will get that chance for Mid American Azarine. Throwing toward Izzy, but the Yellow Jackets get the header by Pong and get possession. Kiero will find Hugo Poles, leaves it. The Yellow Jackets are clearly offside there with Nicole, with uh, Bruno Lago. That'll be brought back for a free kick by Mid-American Nazarene. 12-40 remaining in the second half. 3-1 Pioneers for the lead. Fernando Churin. A 
will put it in play. Nicholas Richmond will be checking in here, it looks like, for the Pioneers. Neely. Well, keeps going forward here. Kiero bothered him a little bit on the run. Now some space to operate for Barrera. Barrera will try to keep that going forward. He's got some help, though, from Indetabai. The Yellow Jackets haven't been able to get their numbers forward yet. They get a ball to Gramberg. They'll run a switch and take it over to DeRocha near side. DeRocha can't get through uh, Fiberg. And a foul against DeRocha will give the Pioneers the possession. Under 12 remaining in the second period. Three ones are score. Mid-American Nazarene is a lead over... Graceland. Evan Neely to Pond, center of the field. Pond back for Evan Neely. He's got Fernando Churin. Chips one to Azurieta. Did he run that one down? Well, he ran it down, but he lost his balance. Jackets get it back. Barrera moving forward for Graceland. And did it by folding over. They try to leave it to him. I think he got the I don't think he got the pass where he wanted and then trying to get it back. A foul is going to be called against Barrera. That gives Mid-American Nazarene the possession at just over 11 to go here in the second half. 3-1 Mid-American Nazarene with the lead. Jackets will get Santiago Gordillo back into the match. Likely when Richmond comes in. The Beers has it near side. Evan Neely chips it toward the box. Hovinga turned around by Stein Gramper. And Monticelli did get that one knocked off of Evan Neely. That allows both Gordillo to come in for the Illa Jackets and Richmond to come in for the Pioneers. Ovinga will be out, it would appear, with Richmond in. Gordillo replaces Barrera in the lineup. And 10-12 remaining in the second. The Yellow Jackets really need to get that next goal and fairly quickly here. Kiero dumps it back for Jack Leeming. Yellow Jackets have the urgency set again now. Mid-American Nazarene. Comes up with some pressure. This is Gordillo trying to turn and negotiate. Isarieta and Isarieta took it away. Isarieta running on alongside Ndedevi. Still playing with it along the far touch line. And Ndedevi will nudge it out to allow the Pioneers to get a throw. Pioneers will also make a substitution. Diego Calderon will be coming in, and he takes the place of Dennis Palacios. Diego Calderon will be coming in for the first time. Kansas City, Missouri product. And in Dedapai, won't be able to get that header brought back in. It will be possession to Mid-American Azarine. Azarieta with another throw. Izzy is right in front of him. They will defer the throw, in fact, to Batui Izza. And that throw sent with some distance. Off the second uh, header, Poles got it cleared out. Now Monticelli be running alongside the Bears. Pass returned now to Monticelli. Moving forward, Monticelli wants Gordillo far side. Gordillo has Indetabai with a little space to operate. Moses Indetabai will continue marching forward. Indetabai eventually runs into Pond and turns it back, but the Illa Jackets still control. There's a chip. Goes into the box. Bruno Lago. He got knocked off balance and a shot. Oh, near side, and that was a chance for... Victor DeRocha, but he went high and wide. Well, the Yellow Jackets did have themselves a chance and a pretty good look by DeRocha, but he wasn't able to get it on frame. 7.48 remaining here in the second. And Carvalho will take the goal kick for the Pioneers. 
Deep kick. Yellow Jackets will get that one at least neutralized. And now Gordillo wants to try to thread that through. Intercepted by Evan Neely, but overran the ball. Recovers to get it. Back to Fernando Churin. It's a high spinner that Leeming sets up on. Got a piece of it. Couldn't find Gordillo. It will be taken by Calderon. Calderon will find Richmond. Back for Calderon. He'll find Pong, who goes to Evan Neely. And now the Pioneers making the Yellow Jackets chase. As Monticelli to Chiero. Chiero couldn't get that one through Neely. Pond has it. He is going to go to Izzy far side. You can see the Yellow Jackets pressuring because now's the stage to do it. It's 6.50 remaining in the second down, too. Calderon did have it intercepted by Pong. No numbers for the Yellow Jackets, but Tom Pong does have Gordillo to his outside. Waits, looks. Now he does find uh, Monticelli. Monticelli's offering toward the box. Gets blocked. This is DeRocha. Tries to send it just in front of the 18. That one's turned around. This is a chase on for the ball. Granberg will go to get it. Leaves it back to Orozco, and he will have the ball recovered nicely by DeRocha to save it along the near touch. Now Monticelli knocked off his feet. Good play of the ball by Toreo. It's still going to be Yellow Jacket possession. Just over six remaining in the second. The throw in Tenever Lago. Neely got to it when Lago hit the deck. This will be Pung. Leaves it long. Gordillo tried to stay on side and did. Neutral. Strike out of the air by Churin. Now it will be Monticelli coming forward. He was, I think he was trying to get the ball to Lago, but it didn't work out. Now Pond had it taken away by Poles. Leaving has some space to operate and dead by toward his left. Gordillo's working his way to the 18. A little further left, it's and dead by. Couldn't get it around Izzy, but they do call a foul. And a card... Coming against Butoyo Easy, or Butoyo Easy. And the Yellow Jackets get a set piece. So they'll get another opportunity. We're at 5.28 to go here in the second. 3-1, Mid-American Nazarene. And the Yellow Jackets, at least from a opportunity, setting here and space setting probably won't have a better chance than what they have right now they get a tight set piece opportunity there's a kick into a scrum and it goes all the way in the yellow jackets will get the goal in that got deflected in now i'm not sure who got that one but the yellow jackets are able to get it in we'll see if they give it credit too but the yellow jackets no throw they gave that to Poles as it thread its way all the way through or not. 3-2, so the Yellow Jackets going to come after it, and it's a one-goal match. That ball goes all the way through to Orozco, and we do have some drama going into the final 5-15 of this one now. Orozco will get this one out of the air. Gordillo trying to set up on it and was able to get the settle. Turns, got the ball. Now look at this. Yellow Jackets, Monticelli, just wide of the near post. Oh, the Yellow Jackets putting two dangerous opportunities together. Luis Munoz is going to be right back in. Or Jose Munoz goes right back in. Dennis Palacios is going to be coming into the game as well for the Yellow Jackets. Yellow Jackets will get Tyler Daly in at 442, remaining in the second. Daly may or may not be able to come in right away. We'll have to see. But Easy will be out. And it will be Kiro out, daily in, 427 to go here in the second. And it, all the while, Arvalho will be kicking, first of all, waiting, and then kicking for Mid American Nazarene. And that drive has Richmond in front, heavy touch on that. The Yellow Jackets will get to it. Monticelli kept it in play. Richmond hanging on to the jersey. He'll be called for a foul. Yellow Jackets now quickly get the ball touched. They will be directed back by the referee where 
Hugo Poles will strike it. 3.45 remaining in the second period. 3-2, Mid-American Nazarene with the lead. The Yellow Jackets, though, already have a quick goal. That ball hit high to the air. Yellow Jackets have a chance. That one goes all the way through. Yellow Jackets are going to be called. For a foul, the Yellow Jackets one high pressure here. And with 3.19 to go, that'll be a free kick. Coming from Carvalho with 3.19 to go with a second. Yellow Jackets. We'll get to this one with Stein Granberg. He has to try to circle it, keep it in play. Does get the ball to Daly. Daly uses Pong. Pong going laterally, trying to slide that one through to Monticelli. Broken up by Neely momentarily. Yellow Jackets pursuing. Pond will find uh, Torreo, and Torreo fouled. That gives not only Mid-American Nazarene the possession, but they get an opportunity to knock off a few more seconds in this one. And we're down to 248. Pond will put it in play. Finds Munoz on the near side. Boy, now it's the Munoz. Well, here's a kick far side that gets directed away. Now it's the Munoz goal that's the game winner, at least setting up to be right now, unless the Yellow Jackets so can pull something off. Lago to Ndedebay. And Ndedebay for Gordillo couldn't quite get it. Is Retta able to direct that one out? 220 remaining in the second. And Ndedebay. Trying to find Lago. That one directed. Well, that one's off the sideline. Leeming's going to have to go back and get it. And here comes a rush on the ball that gets made by Diego Zapata. And he showed some wheels to track that one down. Neely headed that one forward. This is an opportunity. This is one chipped over the goal. And the other Jenkins tie it. Why did Chile was able to get it tied? The Yellow Jackets tie it with a Monticelli goal at 1.57 to go. It's a 3-3 tie. Yellow Jackets able to turn around the counter, and the Yellow Jackets have tied it with 1.57 to go here in the second as the Yellow Jackets get two quick goals to turn around a 3-1 deficit into a 3-3 tie and just under two remaining here in the second. So Monticelli gets one. I think Poles got the other one. After the Yellow Jackets got the penalty kick earlier. It's 3-3. That ball dumped long, far side. This is Zapata. Leeming will cover that one, and Dedevi won't be able to run it down. So some ch- a chance at some numbers going forward here for the Pioneers. And they will use that opportunity, and that means that Hovinga has to come back in or will be coming in for Zapata. And they will also bring Vitas Voito, who started the match. He'll be also in for Evan Neely. At a minute 18 remaining in the second. Here's a throw that comes toward the box, netted forward. This is dangerous territory. Ovenga back to the ball. Yellow Jackets need to get a clearance. And the Yellow Jackets do get a half one. It is taken, though, by... Now there's a chip... On the front side of the 18, headed into the arrow. Roscoe has to go up and get it in traffic and did. Hits the deck afterwards. He and Leeming made contact with 50 seconds remaining. Now time's running. Now cold with 49.2. But Orozco is one of them down. I think Leeming's the other one down for the Illa Jackets. Leeming gets up. The problem is Orozco for now. At 49.2 to go in a second in a 3-3 tie. So Orozco, I'll see if Orozco can stay in here. It would appear that he is trying to get to that position. And he does get into a standing position anyway with 49 seconds remaining in the regulation period. Well, we went into the second overtime before... Deciding the women's match. And 
Orozco will send the punt high into about the midline where it takes one big bounce. Can Gordillo win that? Doesn't look like he won it, but Pung sends it back toward Gordillo's area, broken up by Pond. Now DeRocho will have to run that one down. Munoz will try to move on him, and it's directed off of Munoz, so a throw for the Yellow Jackets at 30 seconds remaining. Numbers forward, though, are still some pressure by Mid-American Nazarene, giving the Yellow Jackets probably a chance if they can negotiate it. Tyler Daly, now it's sent to Pong. Now they get a long one toward Gordillo, and, man, he's got Pon all over his back. This is Hugo Poles. Ahead for Bruno Lago. Bruno Lago trying to circle back with seven seconds to go. Lago knocked off the ball. Now we're going to go to the overtime period. The first overtime coming up. Yellow Jackets won't be able to get it thrown in in enough time, and we're done. 3-3 three, three tie as we go to the first overtime. Graceland and Mid-American Nazarene. You're watching Graceland Men's Soccer, GJackets.com.
Okay, we'll play for the golden goal again, and Mid-America Nazarene will be putting it in play. Yellow Jackets front line will be Nicola Monticelli, Santiago Gordillo, and they also have uh, Bruno Lago. Yellow Jackets have Compost still out for now. Pond lets this one go a little too far. The Bears is on the near side. He's playing in the midfield area. And the Yellow Jackets try to settle with Lago. Gets into space. Poles chips one. Staying on side. Monticelli gets around to the backside again. Monticelli near the byline. Gets into the box. And that one will be directed out with a play by Zurietta that gives the Yellow Jackets an opportunity at an early corner. And gives the Yellow Jackets a chance. Now getting a win over a 5 and one conference team. That kick right in front of the near post. Directed out, though, by Turin. Taken back by Poles. Keeps that one in front of the 16. And Dedebay runs it down to keep alive the drive. Shoots with the left foot. That'll be wide of the near post. Minute 20 gone by here. Third period. Mid-America Nazarene just lost their first match in league play. They're 8-3 overall. They just lost a 3-2 decision to Central Methodist. They were leading 3-1 until late in this one, but the Yellow Jackets were able to punch one across just inside of you know, with two goals, just inside of about six remaining. That one nodded forward. Monticelli trying to keep that one alive. He does have a chance to poke it free, but it will be Voito that gets to it. Now back in, Dennis Palacios. He'll try to reverse it. The Yellow Jackets will run to Rocha to the far side. This is Jose Munoz that has it. He has the last goal for Mid-American Nazarene. They want Ovinga back for Palacios. Now it's going to be taken by Torreo in the front of the box. Granberg gets able to head that one away. Pung got a piece of it, then cleared by Tyler Daly. Voito gets free of Santiago Gordillo. He will be able to get a pass stuck by Hugo Poles, who turns it around. Gordillo's going to try to run it down the far touch, but it will be directed back to Carvalho. Voito will get the kick from Carvalho and sends it to Rick Hovinga. Hovinga has the PK. Score for Mid-America Nazarene. Yellow Jackets get a piece of that. Pung hits the deck. Good play. Turned in by uh, Torreo again. Now in the box. Ooh, that one almost hooked inside. Boy, the Bears. Well, you can see why he's such a dangerous person. He almost was able to hook that one inside. The Bears, he has four goals on the year, but boy, he's had some near misses here. And he has tremendous foot speed also. Luis Martinez will be coming in for the Pioneers for the next chance. 6.37 to go in the first overtime. Orozco will put it in play. Nodded by Pong to go up and get it. Gordillo finds it. Goes now wide. Monticelli, can he get the first touch? He is going to get near the pie line. Has some relief help, but threads the ball. Gets it right back. Monticelli gets taken down to the box. Nothing called. And they will allow the kick coming now to Mid-America Nazarene. Near the lineup comes Luis Martinez. I guess I should restate that, that he went down, he went down to the box rather than taken down to the box. Nothing called. And Sean Pung directs it back, trying to get the ball into the Mid-American Nazarene end. It gets out wide now. Uh, Richmond tried one. That one got blocked. That one sent to Hovinga, and Orozco is able to make a clean save on the Hovinga opportunity that would have ended it. 
Spinning high punt. Gordillo setting up on it. He's got Vueto all over him from behind. It is Hugo Poles that tries to run it down. This will be a handball called with 5-10 remaining in the first overtime. 3-3 tie off a quick restart. Vueto will push it a little further forward. And Munoz back for Vueto. Are they going to try a switch? They are going to go to Fernando Churin. And now Palacios. Palacios goes well wide. They want the Bears. That was a good idea. But they didn't have enough of a chance for, you know, they didn't you know, they judge the speed, I think. Or as judge of the speed of the Bears was a little off. 425 remaining in the third period, or I should say the overtime period. Daniel Orozco sends the kick toward Ndidabai. The Bears got a piece of it. Did he hit it off Ndidabai? No. Yellow Jackets will get the ball out of midfield area. 405 remaining in the first overtime. Ndidabai sends it toward uh, Bruno Lago. He did get the header on it, but could not do anything with it. As a read, as a Rietta sent it in. Now Martinez nudges it toward the corner where Leeming will let it go out. So the Yellow Jackets get a throw. Leeming had to sell the fact that he was going to try to clear that thing. And Dedabai back for Leeming. Can he keep that one in? He's got a well, not at back, actually back in by Azurieta. And then a foul against the Yellow Jackets will give the Pioneers the possession. All right, I'll take it back. I guess that, that one called. This is going to be a throw calling, called for Mid American Nazarene. Boy, here's Hovingos on the edge of the box. Being bothered by Granberg. Granberg all over it. Man, Stein Granberg. Was just riding the back of Hovinga, and that gives up. Now, it's going to be at a sharp angle, but that does give up. A really tight set-piece opportunity for Mid-American Nazarene. And they're talking about the Bears that will hit it. Yellow Jackets will put two in front. The Yellow Jackets need a big clearance at 235, remaining in the first overtime period. The Bears is only going to be about 18 out, and you got all that length on the far post, waiting to get a chance. The Bears might have enough to go ahead and hook this one in anyway. A little chip on the far side, headed out by Stein Granberg. Big one. Can the Yellow Jackets turn it into an opportunity? Monticelli is going to be moving forward with Pond. He's able to get a third touch. Pond, though, made a great dispossess. The Bears comes back now for Pond. Pond's going to get it again. Now Churin has it. Monticelli remains down. That might be a cramp. I'm not sure. He's still feeling it out. This is Pond. Touches now near side. This is Zurieta. His first one blocked. The next one is blocked by the one arm of Orozco and then cleared. Oh. Nicholas Richmond brought one in and a reaction by Orozco with the one arm save. Monticelli remains down. This just well, this looks for the world as a cramp for Monticelli. Compost will be coming in. Well, it might be more than a cramp. We'll see. Well, it does look now like it's a cramp because he's got, they're trying to stretch out as much as possible. Here's a throw coming. Is Arietta. Yellow Jackets need a clearance. Lemmy got a partial on that. Compost will whip it back to the midline. Boito will. Take it from there. Sends it back in deep. Granberg, though, heads it forward now. Pond was in the area. They go ahead and point. Zurietta, or Zurietta points around. Now Orozco's going to let this one go over the goal line. Yellow Jackets get a free kick, or a goal kick with a minute, four, well, minute 13, minute 12, remaining in the first overtime. 3-3 three, three, tie, dramatic comeback for the Yellow Jackets. And now Orozco. Leaves it forward. Heel attempt made by Bruno Lago. Lago does get free. He's got Gordillo. Now he's got Campos in the box. Campos just missed it high. 
Oh, just tied over the crossbar with 47 to go. And the first overtime, it's a 3-3 tie. Compost in the box on the run, and, man, the Yellow Jackets would take that every time. 33 seconds remaining in the first overtime period, 3-3 tie. Carvalho sends a deep one. Yellow Jackets come up with it. Yellow Jackets are going to get this call, but just 20 seconds remaining. Yellow Jackets have to get it set down. They do call a timeout now. They'll call a timeout. As Victor DeRosha. Was wanting the extra time since it was. Since he felt that. He was being withheld from starting now. Poles will get the free kick. So the Yellow Jackets need something from distance. Set piece. Ten seconds remaining in the first overtime. Poles drives it toward the box. Yellow Jackets get a leaming header toward the goal. Carvalho will bring it in and hold it out. We'll go to a second overtime. 3-3 tie. Graceland and Mid-American Nazarene. You're watching Graceland Men's Soccer on GUJackets.com. Three, three times. We go to the second overtime period. Campos, Gordillo, Bago, Tyler Daly. Fronted midline area for the Illa Jackets. Sean Pong, Hugo Poles, back line. And dead by far side. Leaving will be the center back along with Stein Granberg and Victor DeRocha to the near side. Mid-American Nazarene will have Hovinga, Luis Munoz, and Nicholas Richmond. Dennis Palacios is going to be up front. The Bears will be well, front second tier. Pong tries to drive it long, but it got partially blocked. But Campos nodded it forward. Gordillo couldn't get to it. And taken back into the Mid-American Nazarene end. Leaving will have to get to that. Orozco will be able to come up and get it. He looked it in dead abide. Now bounces one time. It'll elect a punt. And the Illa Jackets will try to win that. Gordillo gets a chance to set up on it. But it's won by 
Centurion. Brought back, though, by Pong. Now Pond will get to it. He's able to circle the ball to try to get up the line. Blocked by Andetabai. Can he keep it inside the touch? He will. Nods it towards Sean Pong. Back for Andetabai. Trapped along the sideline, but got out of it as he threaded it through to Hayella Jackets. Uh, Tyler Daly. Orozco will have it back. Kicks it to the near side, but... Vuito sets up on it. Pole sends it forward. Gordillo gets it going forward now. Gordillo wide for Campos. That will be taken first by Izurieta. And Dedebay sends it back in. Gordillo, he's off, well, an offside. Got to be called here. Offside called against Gordillo. 8.45 remaining in the second overtime. It's a 3-3 tie. That kick... Taken more by Pong than in and Dedebay missed the header, meaning that the Bears gets a chance at it. The Bears is going to get fouled by Alonso Campos. Free kick coming for the Pioneers. They'll be allowed to get some numbers coming forward with 8.20 remaining in the second overtime. 3-3 tie. Fernando Churin comes back to Pong. Now, Mozingo wanted it long to Munoz. Munoz, I think, is going to be able to get to it and did get a corner. Or did he? No, it's a goal kick. Yellow Jackets get a goal kick out of that. That's a nice call. That's a big call because Munoz was going for the corner. So Orozco. Will be... Sending it into the air. Tyler Daly sets up on a nods forward. Won't get the compost. And a big blast. Sends it back deep all the way to Orozco. That was Churin that made that big blast of an effort. Seven and a half remaining in the second overtime. Three, three time. Orozco with a line drive kick settled by Hugo Poles. Put forward to Santiago Gordillo. Gordillo gives it back now to Pong. Pong wants Gordillo. Churin trying to provide an alley for Carvalho to come out and get it in, did. He'll cover it up with 7-8 remaining in the second overtime period. And that kick will all get all the way through. Hovinga one-on-one on Granberg. Now here comes uh, Nicholas Richmond, who just missed the near post long or wide. 3-3 three, three tie. Graceland and Mid-American Nazarene. Yellow Jackets, late dramatics to get it tied. We played one overtime period. We're awaiting the Golden Goal to decide it down. And Orozco puts it into the air. Gordillo trying to set up on it with Vito over his back. It, it will be spun forward. Pong miss hit that one. That means mid American Nazarene gets a throw and a great yellow jacket in. Munoz will throw it. Jose Munoz has Nicholas Richmond. Who nods it into the box and an offside call or a foul will be coming against Mid American Nazarene. Yellow Jackets will get a free kick that will be taken by Stein Granberg. And Granberg will drive it toward Bruno Lago. Gordillo tried to go up and get it early. It's not an Ed Munoz miss hit it, but he does have. Vuito behind him, and he drives it long. That one will get all the way through to Orozco before Hovinga can get there. But Orozco will survey the chances here. Five and a half remaining in the second overtime. Three, three tie. Yellow Jackets still trying to get their first real good scoring opportunity here in this half. That one hit off the side of the foot, and Dedebay is going to get the settle in some space. Wants to leave it toward Lago. Ooh, high. High attempt made by Lago, and that one will result in a foul. De Rocha has to clear this one with that, and Munoz will throw from the attacking third. Brings it in. Palacios, Munoz, ooh, that's a high spinner. Orozco comes out to keep it alive. Boy, he made a big play on that backside because Richmond was over there. Orozco with a big decision, more than the play, it was the decision by Orozco, recognizing a potential danger. Gordillo gets it knocked out of the air. Yellow Jacket's going to be called for 
the violation. Quick restart brought back into Richmond, and Dedebay reacts to the ball, but Richmond's going to get a second touch. Finds Munoz on the near side. Palacios drives it back now to Voito. Voito wanted Churin, didn't get a lot of that, but got enough. Pond again to Voito on the near side. Voito gets it there to the yellow jacket in. Now flicked by Martinez. Coming over to Munoz on the near side near the byline. Try to slide it through two, but the yellow jackets react and turn it back the other way. Bruno Lago finds now. Daly sends it forward. Gordillo's going to be able to get to that one. Gordillo gets out wide. Now looking for help. He's got Campos coming back toward him. He tries to turn the corner. That one's going to go over the byline. The Yellow Jackets will get themselves a corner. Well, the Jackets do get themselves a corner because of the one-on-two taken on by Gordillo, and Gordillo was able to do enough to give the Yellow Jackets a chance here with 340 remaining in this second overtime period. Jackets, Hugo pulls. We'll strike it. The Yellow Jackets will get Pereira. Into the reporting area. And Poles leaves it far side. Gramber can't set up on it. It goes all the way through. This is leaning on the far side. Can a blast by Pung do end it? No. Here comes the Bears. The Bears has Daly on him. And man, anytime it's the Bears in some space, you worry. But Tyler Daly was able to get it cleared. This will be a throw coming for Mid American as Arena under three remaining in the. Second overtime period. And that throw up the near touch or far touch line. It's going to be headed forward. Ooh, that's going to be out off of the Yellow Jackets. That means that Mid-American Nazarene gets a corner at 240 remaining in the second overtime. The Bears gets a chance at this corner. And the Bears will strike it with the left foot. So you got to worry about the bender here potentially. That is a great ball far side. That one's going to get knotted away, though, by the Yellow Jackets. Comes over to Hovinga. Hovinga tries to make a cut. Yellow Jackets bring two to him, and the whistle blows, and the Yellow Jackets will be called for a foul. Jackets called for a foul, so now they have to defend a fairly tight set piece. It'll be coming for the near side. 202, 201 to go in the overtime, second overtime period. Yellow Jackets will put Hondo Rocha in front of the ball. In addition to Compost, two person wall. Pond will strike it. Everybody on the far post. And there's Pond that tries to drive it forward. Yellow Jackets get an early hitter by Poles. And the Yellow Jackets try to run this one down and get Compost to it. He's got a leaving with him. They've got a two-on-one. Compost drives it forward. Compost didn't get much on the pass. Leaving got tripped up. He went down. They rule a no call. Yellow Jackets try to keep the thing alive. And the Yellow Jackets bring Logo to the ball, chip it into the box. That'll be taken by Carvalho. And Carvalho will... Strike it back with a minute nine remaining. Low line drive, two hopping kick. Granberg will get a piece of that. Can he save it in? He's going to need it. Now he drives it out into the stands area. It'll be a quick restart now for Jose Munoz. And under a minute remaining in the second overtime, that throw comes to Hovinga. Hovinga bothered. Yellow Jackets got it again. Campos is able to keep possession. Oh, they went a little long with that ball to DeRocha. As Gordillo saw it developing, four minutes or 40 seconds remaining in the second overtime. Another throw broken up by Gordillo. Gordillo leaves it ahead for Lago. He's offside. 30 seconds remaining in the second overtime. Here's Pond, low line drive kick. And Churin had it. Granberg's going to be called for a card. Stein Granberg called for a card with 20 seconds remaining. The other thing this does is allows it allows time to stop and it allows a reset opportunity for Mid-American Nazarene. So the Yellow Jackets have hurt themselves there, and it will particularly hurt if Mid-American Nazarene is able to punch it in. Otherwise, it's a much less organized setup. A pond gets the chance here. The Yellow Jackets need one more big clearance. Can they get one with 20 to go? Pond serves it up. A little soft chip far side. That one is going to be knotted toward the front post. 
And that one denied by Orozco. Orozco with 12 to go. Do they have anything left? Compost one-on-one. Far side on Thibers, who won the header. Here's Gordillo with six to go. To Compost. Heel kick. Far side. And they try to get it back for Compost. We're going to end in a tie. The Yellow Jackets. Might field's a slight victory, though. Coming back from two goals down late. They go to a 3-3 tie. Yellow Jackets next Saturday will be hosting Central Methodist. You've been watching Graceland Men's Soccer, GUJackets.com.